titled, P.S. I Had a Dream. The sisters wait quietly in the Star Hospital waiting room. All too soon, the nurse will bring them to join the rest of the family. Father is ill. Bewilderment, confusion. Finally, they are summoned and they hurry down the hall. One sister stays back, busying herself with the things she feels necessary, worrying of things she fears. The hospital sounds become dulled and timeless. Slowly down the hall, she, there walks a man who is wonderfully familiar, yet unfamiliar. He is wearing a beautiful pink suit, satin bow tie, satin vest. How odd to see him in pink, but yet he is so beautiful. As he nears, she remembers those sparkling eyes and that reassuring <coughs> smile of an uncle long gone. As he passes by, he lovingly smiles. He waves and then enters an arc door facing the early morning sunrise. Following is another figure, this time a woman. She is also in pink, and she is also beautiful. It's hard to remember this youthful, serene woman as her great aunt, whose face is now no longer ravaged by stroke or illness. She also passes by with a smile and a wave. The next figure is expected. She is welcomed, and of course, she is also in pink. Grandmother. Gone for years, but always so near. The same sparkling eyes as the uncle's. The same smile. She does not merely pass by with a smile and a wave. She stops and soothes. She touches and allows herself to be touched, to be once again held dear, so very dear. The time has come. Two figures now traverse this hall, so hard to describe an angel. Beautiful, pink, wings, a face that somehow reflects all the love and the peace that this world and the world beyond offer. She is guiding Father, leading him behind or beyond earthly reach, or maybe not. For just a minute, a second, his eyes are troubled and tearful with worry for those that are left behind. As he walks down the hall, his step straightens and he grows in stature. His eyes clear of tears and pain. His eyes continue to sparkle. His smile is one of peace. His hair changes from the silver of age to the coal black of youth to the curl and the thickness of you. He also stops and he wipes away the tears of a daughter, too fearful to witness his passing. He approached the arc door and gazes into the bright sunshine and then gazes back again. I've had a wonderful life with a wonderful wife. I've been blessed with children who have blessed me with grandchildren who have blessed me with great-grandchildren I've been blessed with nieces and nephews who have blessed me with great nieces and great nephews. I have been loved, and I have loved. I am leaving, but I will never be gone. I am family, and I am love. Family and love will not be forgotten by my absence. I will not be forgotten. I see them all now. They fill my heart and my soul as you have. I see my father, gone for decades and so dearly missed. My mother, my sisters, my brothers. So many loved ones, so many comrades at arm, so many friends. I love you all and was blessed by all. I will see you all again. The angel guides fathers through the arch, stops, turns to the fear fearful daughter with an extended hand and says, your father knows your love. Do not grieve, come with us. They pass together forever, surrounded by love. Love knows. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord of righteous, the Lord the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to those who have loved his appearance. Thank you 
most of you probably saw that the obituary was kind of long. Uh, it's kind of hard to be brief when you're talking about somebody that you loved as much as we loved our dad and all the things we feel he's accomplished in his life. Uh, perhaps the last line of the obituary best describes dad as we knew him. Dad who left behind a legacy of love for God, family, and country. He did not leave this legacy by word or lecture. He left it by his deeds and how he lived his life. Dad was born on September 20th, 1924 in Shelton, Minnesota, about a mile and a half from here in the bedroom of his grandfather's house. Other than a period of a couple of years when he lived in North Dakota when he was a toddler, and the three years he spent in the Army, his entire life has been in the Bagley area, or excuse me, the Shovelin area. There are perhaps two events in Dad's life that had a major impact on him, and probably made him the man he is, or was. Dad was a veteran of World War II. He was drafted soon after he got out of high school, and he served three years in the Army, and he served in the 289th Combat Engineers in the European Theater. Growing up with Dad, we would often hear him talk about his friends that he made. Ralph Hall, Alvin Kinch, Ronald Beale, and Austin Schaefer. Ronald Beale died in Europe. I can remember traveling with Dad to visiting with his dad, Ronald Beale's mother, and Mom, Dad always called her Mom During his life, Dad would often make trips to visit his friends. And I had a couple occasions to go with him. And if I was quiet and sat in the corner, I could listen to Dad talk with his friends about the war. Most of his conversations we were talking about the good things. Occasionally, they would talk about the dark side of things that happened to him. To his kids, Dad was always a hero. To Dad, he was not the hero. Dad, Heroes were the men that he walked off the ship with in France about two weeks after D Day. Dad's heroes were the men that he walked into combat with as they fought through France and Germany. Dad's services affected him the rest of his life. Years ago, I can remember him off telling me, Dad has nightmares. In his 80s, he had nightmares. I, have believed, I believe he had nightmares for the remainder of his life. Second major event in Dad's life <coughs> after he got back from the service. And then the soldiers were never discharged after World War II. They returned home and tried to take up, his, take up their life as they left it. Dad one day went to a basketball game at Bakley High School, and there he noticed a cheerleader. A cheerleader. Took her on a couple dates, well, probably more than a couple dates, because he eventually married her. He married Myrna Larson on March 30th, 1947. They were married at this very church, and for the next 70 years, they were inseparable. During the course of their marriage, they had seven children. Dad's memories <coughs> of friendship during the war are reflected in the names of some of his children. My oldest sister Melba is named after Melvin Kinch. My oldest brother Austin is named after Austin Schaefer and Ronald Deal. And the third one is kind of a fun story in our family because when Dad was in Camp Robinson in Little Rock, Arkansas, he met a young lady from Grandpa Ridge named Eloise Pippa. And Dad told Mom he wanted to name one of his daughters Eloise. As Mom tells the story, she said no. Her daughters will all begin with an M. And then as Mom says, one night she was laying in bed. She had this Eureka moment. And I have a sister named Belarus. <laughs> Family was always important to Dad. Each of us seven kids had memories of Dad. Church and Sunday school every Sunday. Running to the end of the driveway so we could climb up onto the gas truck and ride up to the house. Checklist that he carried on the truck to give to kids along the route, and occasionally to us kids. Uh, us boys borrowing the cars for our teenage escapades and helping us boys get our first motorcycles. He attended major events of our lives, praised our report cards when they were good, had a few questions for us when they were not so good. 
We had some major accomplishments and achievements. We could see the pride in his face. He always was willing to give advice, and he always encouraged us. He especially enjoyed the family, get it, family gatherings and the connections from these family gatherings. He was proud of his family and their achievements. And he would often clip out articles in the paper if one of us were mentioned and mail it to us. And he would even do this with his grandchildren and up to the great grandchildren. Dad's time in the army also instilled to them a desire to serve the community for the remainder of his life. And this was also important to Dad. His community involvement included being a lifelong member of Lansford Free Lutheran Church, serving on various capacities on the board. He's active with the Shovelin PTA and the Shovelin School Board when the Shovelin was independent district. He served as the chairman for the 1964 All School Banking Reunion. He's uh, set up and chaired the first reunion for the 289 Combat Engineers. He was uh, one of the originators and chaired the Shovelin Sada State celebration for many years. Served on the board of the Senior Citizen Center at Bagley, former board, uh, Farmers Independent Board of Directors. Served on the board of the Clearwater County Historical Society, probably one of the organizations he's most proud of serving on and being part of was Urban Blitz American Legion Post number 16. He was recognized a few years ago for 70 years of membership in that organization. In 1999, Dad was recognized as an outstanding senior citizen in Clearwater County, and this is one of his and probably our proudest moments of Dad. As our parents aged and Mom developed Alzheimer's, Dad showed us the meaning of love when it came to our mother. In many ways, Mom and Dad had a traditional marriage. In our household, Mom made sure the house was clean, made sure the laundry was done, made sure the kids all had food that were on the table. Uh, Dad had blood clots in his leg that affected the circulation. Every day, Mom would check his feet, would wash them with fitness toenails if necessary. When Mom developed Alzheimer's, Dad stepped up to the role as caregiver. He made sure the house was taken care of. He made sure that the laundry was done. If he did not prepare a meal for Mom, he took her out to eat, which was probably more often than he prepared the meals. <laughs> when it came for time for Mom to be placed in the memory care unit, because it's no longer possible to take care of her at home. <coughs> Every day we have little meals with her. When it became time for dad to go into assisted living, he chose to be in the same facility as mom. And every day at noon and at evening, he would go down and have his meal with mom. He would sit alongside of her, hold her hand, and tell her he loved her. On good days, mom would respond back to him. I love you. And on one good, really good day, when my dad said, I love you, she responded to him, I've always loved you. I do not believe any of us kids ever heard dad say, I love you, to any of us. Uh, last few years of life, my sisters often come with that when they said, I love you to dad. He would say, Thank you. <laughs> and then when I brought up to one of my nieces, he would say, That's nice to them. <laughs> The last day, when Dad was last day when Dad was with us, my one sister bent over, kissed Dad on the forehead, and said, "I love you, Dad." And he said, "I love you." That's the only time. Any other questions? <coughs> but we never doubted Dad's love. He showed us by actions and his life, his love for us. Dad passed away on September 27, 2018. <coughs> We have been blessed. We had our mother with us until she was 88 years old, and our father with us until he was 94 years old. But the loss is still hard. As Christians, though, we draw comfort from the knowledge that though before us is the earthly body of our father, we know in our hearts that Dad is with our Heavenly Father, and that with him is Myrna, and he's holding her hands. Dad is again with his mother, his, daughter, his father Gilbert, and his sister Dawn, and his brothers Arlo and Artie. And along with Ronald Beale, Ralph Paul, Melvin Kinch, and Alfred Austin Shaker, his friends in World War II, Dad is again walking with heroes. <coughs>
Then firm. I called to the Lord in my distress, and the Lord answered by setting me free. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in our flesh. It's better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in uh, political rulers. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell. But the Lord came to my help. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. And this is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious <coughs> unto him. And the Lord look upon him with favor and give him peace. Amen.